Hi, so we're going to talk about how to create your custom swatch of 12 colors. This is my line work. Um, I've made it the right size. I've corrected it from the last video. And if I set this layer to multiply, multiply hides the white of the layer. Then you can see where my template is. This is all my template stuff and where that was. Um, I don't really need the template anymore, so I'm just going to delete it. Um, if you don't want it, if you're scared to delete something, hide it and put it underneath. This white is just a white uh, background that if there's any holes, see how I erased some stuff? So if you erase anything in your line work that you brought in, you can just put a white layer under it. Let's begin with colors. You may as well um, open up the template that was given to you. Um, in order to do this, uh, to help you pick your colors. So I open this in Photoshop. This is the template that you received. I'm just going to copy it and bring it into my actual other, um, my source file. So I can select all, edit, copy, and let's go, if you go to window, then you can see, um, the file that you're all the files that you have open are in window and I'm gonna paste okay so this is my template and it's pretty small um, another thing that I'm gonna do to help me pick colors I like to pick colors looking at the thing that I'm gonna color otherwise it's like very confusing let's get out some guides view rulers Command R, Command R, show hide rulers, or Control R if you're on PC. So write that down in your notebook. So here are my rulers. I can hide and show them. And I'm in the Move tool right now. It's important that you're in the Move tool. If you're in a different tool, it doesn't work. So make sure you're in the Move tool, which is V, shortcut V. I'm going to click on the ruler, and I'm going to drag. You have to click on the actual ruler, um, and it might take you a moment to like actually figure out if you're clicking on the ruler or if you're not clicking on the ruler. So I dragged rule guides. These blue things are called guides. You can go up to view, and then you can say clear them if you want them to go away. Um, if you go to show. It says guides and it's clicked, and that's a command semicolon. Shortcut key, command semicolon, Mac, control semicolon, PC. It's going to hide and show your guides. So this is helpful. What I'm doing is I want to have my little template to the side of my area that I'm going to draw or color but I want to maintain the original size of my image file. So I'm going to go to the crop tool right here, which is C, shortcut key C, crop tool. And I'm just going to extend this out a little bit to the side and press enter. And then I'm going to take the layer that I just brought in, which is my template. Let's rename this layer. Let's call this uh, color template. And I'm going to make this bigger. So how do we do that? We're going to command T, control T, free transform. Write that down in your notebook. We're going to resize it. And I just want it to be big enough that I can actually use it. And now what's nice is that you can use this area over here to kind of check out some color ideas and then put them all into this part. 
As you start to pick colors, make sure that you're doing it on a separate layer. Do not color on your line. Let me repeat that. Do not color on the same layer that your line work is on. Otherwise, what's the point of even having layers? Then you're just doing everything on the same layer. It doesn't make any sense. So, this is my line work layer. I named it line work. I made it traditionally. This is my template there. I don't want it forever, so I'm not going to flatten it. Let's lock these. I can click on the lock key, and now they're locked. I'm going to make a new layer. And let's call this layer color. I'm going to move this line work layer to the top, and I'm going to color underneath. And you might say, Katrina, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you color? Do your coloring under. So this is my color layer. Why would I color underneath um, the layer? You can't see it. Well, let's look at this up here. This is our layer mode. If this is set to normal, then you can't see anything underneath that line work layer. The line work layer is covering it. Let's set it to multiply. And now I can see through. So set it to multiply and then lock it. Then um, that way you can kind of see all your work that you're going to be doing is on your color layer. Another thing that can help me to color other than this template, which you're going to need to fill out anyway, is bringing in another photo. I'm going to open file open, a cool thing that I found that I kind of admire the colors of it and I want to maybe use it in this image for some inspiration. This is a crazy, crazy flower. I People have told me it's a passion fruit. It looks nuts. I actually took that photo. And I want to use some of the colors of it. So how do I put this file into my source file? Select all, copy. And then I'm going to find my source file, and we're going to paste that in there. You can see everything is pretty small. So Command T to make it bigger. And I can hide my line layer. Um, and this is the flower. Now let's make a new. I'm coloring. This is my color layer. So let's use a tool. This is called the eyedropper tool. We haven't really used it yet. Its shortcut key is I. I like some of these colors, so I'm going to sample them. If you click there, that color shows up in the foreground color box. This is the foreground color box. Now I'm going to take the brush tool here, and I'm just going to make, that's pretty dark, I'm just going to make some samplings of colors. and. So, eyedropper tool, um, the brush tool. I'm just switching between the two tools, and I feel like the colors that I'm getting aren't really what I exactly thought that this was. Um, so, I for eyedropper tool. Let's get some of this crazy letter. B for the brush tool. Shortcut keys allow me to work really quickly and not have to go up here and then go over there, right? Um, so I'm just taking a crazy sampling of these random colors, and I probably don't want to use all of them. I feel like I don't actually like any of these colors, so I'm going to be probably only using the ones that I do like. For my sweet, sour, um, etc. But this is just to show you how to use the eyedropper tool and to kind of select different colors. And if I move it around, you can see that I get some different colors there. Now that I have some colors in here, I might not like some of them, so I'm just going to delete the ones that I don't like. And let's talk about using the foreground color box to 
make a desaturated color, saturated, and get all these colors that we need. I don't really like some of these, so I'm just going to go ahead and erase them. And some of them are really similar to each other, so I can kind of um, narrow them down. Like these two blues are really similar, so I'm just going to pick one. Another thing that I suggest you do is to actually use them and see what they look like in your, uh, in your work. So that's just one way to choose colors, right? Another way to choose colors is double click in the foreground color box and you can just choose colors this way. So I kind of want like some nice reddish colors. So I'm going to put that one in there and I can actually paint it in just to see how it's going to look and then maybe double click again in the foreground color box uh, maybe I want like a teal color okay and this right these two look kind of similar so maybe I'm gonna choose one or the other so I'm just going to take the one that I got. Um, so that's another way to pick colors. You don't necessarily need to use a, um, a photo to help you. But using photos is kind of a nice way to just get some random colors that you wouldn't normally um, choose on your own. Let's see how these colors fit into our requirements. Do we have any values of dark? This one looks pretty dark. I'm gonna look at it. And maybe I want it to be dark, but not super dark. We have three buttons here. H, S, and B. H stands for hue, meaning color. S stands for saturation. And B stands for brightness. Familiarize yourself with this vocabulary by reading the color lecture that's in Canvas, please. That way you will know what is saturation, what is desaturation, etc. What are tints, what are shades. You should know that because of the lecture in Canvas. RGB, red, green, blue. This slider, we can slide it up, I'm adding more red. I'm adding more green. I'm adding more blue. Now let's look at this color that was created. So that's a dark color, but it's not as dark as that one. So you can adjust your colors accordingly. Um, and this might be a good color for shadows, which we're going to talk about shading later. So maybe I want to use that one as my dark color. Maybe some of these are already kind of medium values. Um, this is kind of more of a medium tone. A lot of these are more pastelish and lighter, so we can put them in there. Let's look at how to, how to I get a desaturated. So I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to select the color I want. Double click in the foreground color box. Let's press S for saturation. We have a slider bar. I'm going to bring this down. And this is going to desaturate my color. Now, I'll put it next to it. You can see the difference. So maybe I want this one. Maybe this is a nice desaturated color that I want to use somewhere. Um, how do I get saturation? I'm just going to put a color in there. It doesn't matter what color. Um, and then, right, saturation, then we go the other way. Let's bring it up. H stands for hue. You can change the color. And you can kind of use this intermittently. You can select a color, mess around with these slider bars, um, right? Okay, kind of like this 